you all a very good evening. Let me begin my talk with the experiments that I usually conduct every year in my institution. As soon as new batch of BAMS students enter into our institution, this is what I ask them to do. I ask them to count the number of years that they have wasted before entering into IBM. And it is usually somewhere around two to five years or two to four years. And on an average, in a batch of 60 students, it amounts to be around 200 years. And I ask them, what did you do during these, these years? Then they say that we just were preparing for pre medical entrance test or need. So, what I want to emphasize is our youth are wasting 200 human years per batch in preparation and multiply this by 200 colleges that are present in the country and it amounts to be around 40,000 years and this is for one year. So every year these many years of our youth which are useful, energetic, productive, could have been utilized in a very productive manner, are being wasted. Have you ever thought of this? And the bigger question is whether, as a society, as a country, can we afford such a loss? Because all these are brilliant minds. They all have big aspirations, they are intelligent, cream of the students who aspire to be doctors. And unfortunately, these many human beings are being wasted every year. So, let us accept that the message is very clear. Our IVL courses, IVL programs are not attractive. So, how to make them attractive will be the focus of today's talk. First reason why IVL courses are not attractive is because once a student enters into Ayurveda program, then the path for his progress or her progress is almost a unified or rather a dead end because he or she cannot once again return back to the mainstream sciences. So once he or she enters into Ayurveda, he has to remain in Ayurveda. He cannot or she cannot pursue further studies in mainstream sciences. Why is that so? Because the basic sciences such as physiology, biochemistry, pharmacology, or maybe genetics, molecular biology, though these subjects are included in their syllabus or curriculum, but unfortunately they are not being taught by the experts in the respective fields. Who teaches them? Are the teachers? Who are in turn not trained in these subjects? Except for a few institutions such as Banaras University, where we train our students, PG students, uh, in these subjects, and uh, the experts in the respective subjects they come and teach them. But this is not true in most of the other institutions. So they are not experts in the field, and they teach. Obviously, the content gets diluted, and quality gets compromised, <coughs> and that is why our students are unable to get entry into maybe MSc or PhD in higher studies of modern science. See, this is where the mainstream sciences are kept aside or kept distant from our approach or our uh, entry from our bachelors or postgraduate post students of Iowa. Now, <coughs> again, application-based content is very minimal in Iowa curriculum. And the textbooks also are very boring. We do not include the recent advances in our textbooks. So why is this important? Because to contemporize the ancient textbooks, this is the only way. And this has been done by all the commentators so far. And that is how Ayurveda has been kept alive as a life science. Otherwise, it would have been a dead science so far, by now. But it is not dead. 
because all the commentators have been trying to come contemporize the country. So here also, the need of the day is to contemporize Ayurveda in terms of modern science and modern values. There is a huge gap between good and bad institutions. Good institutions are available to maintain the patient's records because there is too much of overload of patients. And that is why good observational studies are not coming out of these institutions. But in poor institutions, all the patient records are up to date because there are no patients and most of these data are fake. I have been a member of several visitation teams and I have visited several colleges as inspector on a random and surprise visits and I know how these colleges function and there is a systematic way, way in which fake data is manufactured on a day to day basis and we have to accept these facts and then only we can progress. Corruption is penetrated, has penetrated into our system so that there are host teachers and even host students nowadays. Teachers that are present in the college only on the day of inspection. And even students, they get their thesis written by some host authors and they have to only appear for the examination and they get the degrees. This is how we have diluted our system and this is a very very a big challenge that we have. How to contract this and how to do some, something about it? First thing is stop opinion based policies. Whatever policies that we have are mostly opinionistic. Someone thinks that this group of experts is most intelligent and they form a team and ask them to frame some recommendation. And depending on the governments, governments come and go. And that is how every now and then the policies keep changing. But this is not how the policies are made. In good universities or in good developed countries, they have got specific research institutions for policies. Policy Research Institute for Medical Education is what many, many good universities have. But there is no such mechanism in India. We do not have anything that ensures that policies are evidence informed or evidence based. We do not have anything like evidence based policy making. This is where we are lacking. For instance, NCERT, it conducts periodical surveys to evaluate its own programs at school level and it keeps correcting their programs every now and then. But we do not have this sort of mechanism. Even for medical education, even for Ayurveda education, we do not have this. For instance, can you imagine that the way how practice Ayurveda is practiced in Kerala can it be replicated in UP and Bihar? It is not possible. Because Kerala, you consider the population density, poverty, social economic status, literacy, and awareness. It is completely different from the population of Uttar Pradesh or Bihar. And in such a contrasting situation, you cannot expect the Ayurvedic practice as it is done in Kerala to be replicated in UP and Bihar. In Kerala, the patients themselves are aware that they know when to approach to an uh, Ayurvedic physician and when to go to a, a modern physician. But that cannot, this cannot be expected in some other states of the country. So, one size fits all approach is not the one that we need. We need a properly evidence informed policy. Then only we can handle the situation. Second, stop mimicking biomedical research methods. We are blindly copying the methods which are being followed by modern biomedical scientists. One drug, one disease approach, for instance. This is not how we treat I mean, the diseases. An Ayurvedic physician might treat 10 different patients suffering from the same disease through 10 different interventions. But this is not how modern medicine is practiced. For all the diseases, I mean all the patients suffering from same disease, the treatment is almost similar in my medical sciences. But it is not how I practice. 
I mean that interventions are planned based on several factors such as maybe Agni, Sarka, Pragiti, Nilamastha, Sarvastha and so on and so forth. So unless you don't include all these factors into your research, you don't do justice to Ayurveda. This is what we are going wrong. And whole system plans are the only way out. And unfortunately in our educational institutions, we do not encourage these sorts of studies. Even our MD students or PhD students, they all are compelled to do the research in a copied research methods in a way that is followed in modern medical sciences. This is one more important aspect. Show successful stories. There are several successful people in Ayurveda. There are several successful clinicians, successful academicians, successful entrepreneurs. Bring them to the colleges and make them interact with students and teachers. Let the students have first hand experience of meeting and talking to the successful personalities in Ayurveda. There is no such forum in Ayurveda as of now. So recognize a few centers of excellence for instance and ask them to invite successful practitioners to teach Ayurveda students and also teachers. Let students and teachers interact with successful researchers, entrepreneurs and clinicians. There is one more problem with our system. Why Ayurvedic system of education is not attractive? Because after you do your MD, there is nothing to do further. You have to go into PhD. There is no super specialization. In fact, there are several hospitals and several institutions which conduct and deliver the services in highly specialized areas, such as Ayurveda neurology, Ayurveda cardiology. I mean, they look and so on. But we have neglected these institutions. Let them, let us rope these institutions in and let us ask them to offer some DLP or MCH or DM kind of programs so that our students can get access to specialization. Similarly, skill based programs. Skill based programs are again unregulated, partly unregulated, and we need to have some sort of regulation. And with that, we can produce good skilled personnel, maybe either the nursing, either the particular based, either the pharmacist, either the veterinary physician, either the dietitian, and so on and so forth. So that if this unskilled workforce becomes competent enough, it will prove to be a very important complementary force that will be added to the, the potential of either physician. Promote quality and accessibility, accessibility. Sensitize modern medicine doctors. Maybe short term courses of Ayurveda. Introduce to modern medicine doctors in medical colleges or maybe to medical students. Introduce good teaching, teachers training programs. Currently, we have only one institution that runs formal training programs for teachers, that is Ayurveda Vidya Page. But, Russia, I with them. but again, those CME programs are not that effective because we do not invite the right persons to deliver the content. The routine content that is delivered in the class is also delivered in the CMEs. That is not how the CMEs are expected to work. Similarly, Merge some Ayurveda colleges into existing state of central universities. This is another important idea. In a recent work, we have shown that the institutions where multidisciplinary experts exist, they always have performed well as long as as far as the research output is concerned. When compared with those institutions which are standalone institutions and isolated ones where you have not only Ayurveda practitioners and Ayurveda teachers. So, if you compare the educational institutions of different regions of the country and if you compare the research output, it is very clear that the institutions such as Banas University have excellent, excellent track record. Because in the same university campus, you have got zoology, botany, pharmacology, pharmaceutics, physics and what not. Everything is there in one same campus and this, this promotes collaborative efforts and that is how I will, the Banasi University for instance has been able
to produce a huge number of research papers of good quality. Introduce periodic licensure examinations for renewal of licenses. This is another important aspect. If you, if you don't do this, there, is, there will be no mechanism to check whether our clinicians are really maintaining and keeping them themselves updated or not. Because our, there is nothing called uh, lifelong learning which is encouraged in our usual routine curricula. To ensure that our products become, our graduates become lifelong learners, this is what is to be ensured. And lastly, we need to introduce some network VFI examination for ensuring the quality of teachers. Just because one has MD or MSKY to his credit or her credit, it is it is not possible that he will or she will be a good teacher. Good teacher can one can become a good teacher only if he or she has the aptitude and inclination and passion for teaching. In the absence of that, simply having a degree will not serve the purpose. With this, I conclude my talk. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.